Well, it's here, ladies and gentlemen. And this four foot tall box from Train World, the next MTH one gauge piece. If you like what you see, please subscribe to the JLWII 2000 channel and leave a like on the video. Also, don't forget to click the bell icon so you'll be notified of future train videos. Box number two, inside larger box, as you can see here. Box number two is open. Here we have the big boys actual box. All right. Turn the box around here. Straight 132nd indoor outdoor. And you got up top here the information for the big boys. Okay, so here goes nothing. Just a little pull tab here. Certificate of Authenticity. This is pretty much MTH's last run of G-Scale, but there may be more ahead because there's a company kind of taking over. Some people don't like this, but the only easy way to get the locomotive out of the box is what I like to call gravity assist. It is taped, so it's not like the sides are going to fall off. But I do tend to hit the ceiling. Except upstairs where I've got some pretty huge ceilings. And I slide it back down. And give it a tug the rest of the way. All right, the final box. We had the outer box. We had the outer outer box. We had the outer outer box. And this is the styrofoam box in which this locomotive is encased. So just a quick aerial view before we get into this. Looks like we got some lead trucks there. Traction tires, smoke deflector, don't know what that is, it's a coupler for G-Scale instead of the prototypical looking couplers and more I don't know. So let's pull the ribbon here. reveal the locomotive and tender. Now this should be an oil tender, it is. So that's good, because that's the one I ordered to reflect what Big Boy's actually running with right now. All right, so what I'm gonna do is lift this out carefully as possible. And there's wood blocks on the pilot. I've got to be careful with. So we have to turn it to its side. Get that removed. As you can see there, setting it up right would have caused some serious strain on that area. Happen to have the perfect fat head, flat head screwdriver. For this. I can just uh, not drop stuff. Okay, that is why there's a lead truck here. Because this area needs to have a lead truck installed. Okay, just installing the uh, lead truck here. 
a little tricky because you have to angle the truck to get it installed. Okay, I flipped it back right side up and I've got a big piece of foam that sits in here wedged in between these two pieces here and uh, I think it's ready to rail you know which I'm gonna turn it around and face that way all right we got that seated properly now for the tender a little lighter and a little more manageable than the locomotive there's the tender. I'm gonna set that down. Now, if you look at the bottom of the tender, there's a, a 10 pin connection. Female on this end, male on the other. You line it up and you drop this square peg into the drawbar of the locomotive. And there we have the locomotive all railed finally. All right, guys, moment of truth here. We are doing the extended startup on this. Here we go. Just a track going on here. Not exactly straight, but it should uh, go a smoother, faster speeds. That was one. some break in I need to get my G scale layout going here so that I can break it in
let's listen to some sounds now. Um, the MTH1 gauge, which is 132nd scale, uh, not 129th like a lot of G. Uh, there's a, it's treated just like DCC, or you can run it on DCS. So I'm going to do F1 for the bell. Two for uh, whistle. Yep, so uh, let's see. Three start up and shut down. Four is passenger freight announcements, which we'll go over in a minute. Eleven is grade crossing. I'll do that real quick. said slower speeds is all I can go out on here and it does, it does kind of creep along a little bit at slower speeds but once you get it up around five or six it's pretty smooth which is where I'm at now So uh, that is uh, forward and backwards. Now let's go ahead and do some passenger freight announcements. You can also see on the front here, you got little flags, the headlight, 4014 shield, this smoke box door opens up and you can adjust the smoke. You can switch from DC to DCS and it controls the volume. Let's go ahead and hit passenger freight announcement so you can hear that. And now I'd like to welcome Union Pacific's chairman, president, and CEO, Lance Fritz, to the stage. He is the man who gave the green light to bring Locomotive 4014 back to life. Lance, the microphone is yours. So then you hit F4 again to go to the next one. Union Pacific number 844 brought to Union Pacific in 1944, topping out at a speed of 110 miles an hour. Far down the track on my right, the latest steam locomotive to join the Union Pacific family. The big boy, Union Pacific 4014, all 1.2 million pounds, 7,000 horsepower.
So that is the passenger freight announcements all the way through. While they're going on, it does not respond to throttle inputs. Closely at the firebox, you can see a firebox flicker. There's also ash pans on there, which were removed on the real big boy because the oil, oil fire did not need that. Rear marker light and reverse headlight are on the back. Also, water line markings all the way up. The tender on the left hand side, and it's a little hard to see, but there are lit marker lights on the rear too. I'll try to give you a better view of that. They're a little dim, but there are the rear marker lights on this locomotive as well. Now this thing is eating uh, quite a bit of smoke. I've been using uh, JT's Mega Steam oil-fired steam smoke on this. And it seems like it's either intelligent or just lowers the temperature if it gets low smoke fluid because eventually that smoke will stop billowing like this if it gets lower and it just is kind of a lot lighter like you may have seen in portions of this video but as soon as I add some smoke it picks back up in volume quite dramatically so we're gonna look at the front here a little closer you do have big boy on the front of the locomotive and a headlight and a shield we talked about some of that uh, and you have the marker lights and the number boards that are lit very nicely so just a really nice locomotive. It's essentially a giant MTHHO locomotive with better smoke and better sound because it's big. As you can see, I'm using my MRC Prodigy Elite system, which I've since retired from the layout, to run this. And you can also run it with the DCS system and you know quill the whistle and things like that with the DCS system as well. Now we didn't get to go over the details, so I guess I will do that. So let's um, move this forward. We talked about the LED headlight pilot. But there's also a knuckle a coupler, I should say, that basically pivots around so you can have just the pilot or the knuckle up front. There's builder's plates on the side. You can see that. Looks like it might be just slightly installed crooked. There's all the plumbing and the two sets of engines. Engine drivers on the side, the drivers with the side rod detail. Talked about the smoke box. There's dual dynamos on the other side you can see there. There's cab figures installed. There's a brake wheel on this side. trailing trucks with silver bearing caps. There's the brake wheel. There are uh, cab figures installed like I mentioned. Looks like um, windows have a little bit of residue on them. Wiped off here. But the windows adjust. Tenders your oil tender with toolbox and three water hatches. There's a dipstick area up top here, right here. We have one water hatch, a toolbox, and three more hatches here. 
Uh, one of those is for oil, the other ones are for water. You got your regular coupler back here and you have a really glossy finish as well. Other side of the loco, another builder's plate. Way up front there. I did put an HO scale SD70 ACE here for comparison. It's shorter than even the drive wheels. There's the dynamo sitting right there, the boiler and sand domes obviously. Blow down plumbing. It's kind of in that area there. Your draw bar and more detail on your tender, which includes the silver tipped ends, the bearing caps on here, and all the centipede tender detail. I can finally show you what I mean by the smoke. It's like it lowers its volume when it gets low. And you see that? It just went way more. I didn't change any buttons or anything. So I don't know if it's just detecting that it's getting low, or that's just what happens when the fluid gets low. It's probably the case. I think my HO steamers kind of smoke less when the fluid gets low, but that is the output that it's set on from the factory uh, if you have it properly filled up. Uh, they say 30 to 40 drops to start. So it, it could go through this little bottle of G JT steam in probably a day if you're running it out on your garden railroad. I wanted to pull up next to this MTH HO scale SD70 ACE so you can see the scale difference that is HO scale next to that and also so you can see just the volume of smoke coming out of this thing. Alright, a couple things to mention before I wrap this review up. One, this is advertised to be equipped with a smoking whistle, but, o but only with DCS 4.0 or later, and I have DCS 3.0, so I don't know if that works. Uh, also, just for uh, people that are worried about realism or wanting to know about realism, if you look down here in between the two drivers, right about here, these are electrical pickups for the track, and they glide along the track and pick up power. There's another one right there. So that's just letting you know that there's going to be a little bit of realism compromise with that, but I think that's fairly common in G-scale. So with that said, that's it for the MTH. One gauge, big boy. MSRP, I'm not sure. I think it's around $2,500, but they're online for around $2,500. But they're also selling for about $4,000 on eBay, certain versions of them, so um, you may want to get to that quicker. Last I checked, trainworld.com did have some in stock of the coal uh, tender type. So, pretty cool locomotive. I think it's just like a giant HO scale DCC operated locomotive. I like that you can operate it in DCC or DCS. And uh, it's pretty cool, and it also operates, I think, with just standard track power, according to the manual, for, like, uh, DC. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this review. I'm going to work on my, on my garden railway now, because uh, I want to get that up and running so I can see this thing run with the passenger consist that I bought for it before it even, um, well, right after I had ordered it on the announcements. So I have a passenger time assist for it, a short one albeit, but it is MTH as well. So my G-Scale Railroad will be the subject of some future videos. We will see you next time right here on my channel. Take care. If you're looking for any of the great products in this video, check out your favorite retailer or shop online at trainworld.com. Trainworld has a robust supply of products to fit your modeling needs.